Talk to us a little bit about the Knights of Labor. We've talked about alliances among women of different classes, but didn't these women look to men, especially organized men, for help? That's a great question, and I think in many ways that's where working women started. They started by looking to organize men because often they were men in their own families or people they knew somehow from work. And the Knights of Labor was the first national labor organization that really organized men and women. And so they had mixed assemblies where men and women would participate. They also had some all-female assemblies where just women could get together and organize. And they were also very significant because they brought in this woman named Lenora Berry to be the general investigator of women's work and she became a very important voice uh, in terms of advocating for working women's particular concerns. And she was actually one of the first people to publicly name the problem of sexual harassment. She actually spoke at meetings and said, you know, women are facing this huge challenge. They really need to be organized, not just so they can earn better wages and have shorter hours, but so that they don't have to suffer from sexual harassment. Um, Lenora Barry, was she a working class woman? Did she come from the shops or? She is an interesting case. She was an Irish immigrant. She had actually been married to a man who was a painter. She was fairly educated, educated enough to work as a teacher. But when her husband died of lead poisoning, he left her a widow with three young children. And at this point, she was living in upstate New York, in Amsterdam, New York. And she tried taking in sewing, but she couldn't really make any money doing that. So then she went out to work in a hosiery factory. And she discovered that for her first week of work, when she got her first paycheck, it was 85 cents. Mm. And so she was just outraged by this. And it was in the mid-1880s, so the Knights of Labor were starting to organize, and she joined. And so she joined the Knights of Labor. She rose very quickly within the organization. And at its peak, there were about 65,000 female members in the Knights of Labor out of a total membership of about 800,000. And so Lenora Berry became this general investigator of women's work, and she became a real leader for a few years, both in terms of investigating women's working conditions, but also speaking on their behalf. But the Knights of Labor, uh, I've always thought of as what they call a producerist organization, and I think that's what they call themselves. How does that relate to women's work? Well, I think it's the very fact that they were so open that made a space for women. At this point, the traditional trade unions tended to focus more on skilled occupations, and almost by definition, those were jobs from which women would be excluded. Women's work was pretty much always seen as unskilled, even if quite a bit of skill went into it in terms of sewing. So women were never, almost never skilled workers. So that, by definition, excluded them from trade unions. And then the other thing about women is that a lot of them were doing domestic work at home, maybe for their own families. And I, I think it's interesting that the Knights in some senses recognize women's domestic work as labor as well and saw those women as producers. Mm.